Hi, today I want to talk a little bit about owning a wooden boat. What's it like? What kind of things do you have to do? Etc. I've owned Tortuga, my 1936 wooden motor cruiser now, for 10 years. So I got a pretty good feel at this point for most of the factors involved. Before I go into anything in detail, I'd like to make it clear exactly what I'm talking about. When I say a wooden boat, I'm not talking about a modern boat, which is perhaps cold molded with a fiberglass overlay or maybe uh, built out of plywood. Uh, I'm talking about a, a traditionally built plank on frame boat. I'm also talking perhaps about a little bit older boat, one that's been around for a while and that is going to require periodic maintenance. So, why do you buy a wooden boat? The idea of wood as a boat building material is attractive to you. You like the idea of owning a boat built with renewable resources or perhaps you like the idea of a classic boat that came from a prior era when things were done a little bit differently. Every wooden boat owner has a slightly different reason for owning a wooden boat, but I think those two things are probably pretty common in terms of reasons that people actually go out and buy a wooden boat. Now that you've decided to buy a wooden boat and you've found one you want, what's next? you are going to run into some issues. First off, a lot of lenders won't lend you money to buy a wooden boat. So in many cases you're going to be looking at a cash purchase, which means you're going to have to have all of the money on hand to buy the boat, as well as have whatever money is needed to do any repairs that are needed or upgrading that you might want to do. Fortunately, Unless you're buying a really big boat, the cost of a wooden boat is not that outrageous in most cases, particularly compared to a new fiberglass boat. So, you know, you can probably come up with the cash if you save a little bit. There are a few lenders who will lend you money for the boat, but only after a very good survey that really finds no problems with the boat. So if there are any issues with the boat, it's going to be tough to get financing. After that, you come up against insurance. Well, a lot of insurers won't even touch, say, a 30-year-old fiberglass boat. And the number of insurers that will actually insure a 50, 60, 70-year-old wooden boat is pretty small. So you're going to have to probably find a specialty insurer to cover the boat. And if you finance the boat, insurance is going to be a necessity. Now I would suggest very strongly that when you're looking for insurance that you only consider what are called agreed value policies. The other kind of policy which goes on a depreciated value is probably going to say that your boat is essentially valueless if anything happens to the boat. At least with an agreed value policy, if anything happens, anything catastrophic happens, you will get the agreed value back. Okay, what else? Well, say now you've bought the wooden boat, you've figured out how to pay for it, you either paid cash or you found a compliant lender and the boat surveyed really well. What about owning the boat? Well, a couple of things are going to happen. If you bought a true classic, People are going to look at the boat and be interested in it. So you're going to have to know a fair bit about it and be willing to talk to people about it and tell them about your boat. This usually isn't a big problem with boat owners, particularly wooden boat owners. We tend to be a group that really enjoys sharing what we know about our boats and what makes them unique. So that's not really much of an issue, but you will have people walk up to the boat and look at it. My boat is in a marina here in Maine and every summer I get dozens of people walking over to take a look at the boat. And most of them, ask if I'm there, ask questions, 
you know, would like to know as much as possible about the boat. So I have to be prepared to spend a little bit of time telling them about the boat. So now that you've bought the boat, you're comfortable talking about your boat to other people. What about keeping the boat? Well, if you want to keep a wooden boat in top shape, you are probably going to have to do a certain amount of maintenance. That maintenance can involve replacing the plank occasionally, maybe sistering a frame, re-canvassing a cabin top or a deck, or more commonly, painting the boat, varnishing any exterior wood. These are things that normally happen every year. I know I paint my boat every year to make sure that it's in good shape and it looks good. Also, painting gives me a very intimate feel for what the condition of the hull is because when you're painting the hull or having the hull painted, you have to go over it inch by inch, you'll notice any problem spots. So that brings up the issue of now I've got a wooden boat, I'm doing maintenance on it, how much is it going to cost? How much maintenance does it take? Well that really is a function of the overall condition of the boat when you buy it and how well you maintain it and what its history is. For example, my boat had some deck issues on the side decks and aft deck where those decks were leaking. Fresh water is the bane of wooden boats because fresh water generally has mold and rot spores in it. Once those spores get down into the boat, it immediately starts rot. So if you have deck leaks or cabin top leaks, you're going to end up with fresh water getting into the boat and that's going to promote rot. In my case, the deck leaks caused water to run down the inside of the hull. So over the years, I've replaced quite a few hull planks in the top sides because they rotted from the inside out. So every time I see a punky plank, I cut out that plank and put a new one in. And usually also will do the plank above it just to make sure that I get everything. Because if you leave any rod in the boat, it's just going to get worse. It doesn't go away. Doing repairs such as drilling holes or scraping out the rot and filling it with uh, something like CPES, which is a penetrating epoxy or with, or with some sort of filler, simply will not do the trick. The rot will still be there and it will get worse. So, who's going to do the work on your boat? Really, you have two options. You can hire it done. You can find a shipwright or a boatyard that specializes in wooden boats that has skilled people and have them do the work. Or you can do it yourself. Well, there is one big reason to do it yourself if you have the skills, and that's money. Boatyard labor probably going to cost you at least $75 an hour to have work done on your wooden boat. And, for example, say you have a topside plank that needs to be replaced. The plank itself is probably not going to be expensive. For example, the planks on my boat cost about $2 a linear foot. So if I have to replace a 15-foot plank, the wood is only going to cost me about $30, maybe $35. But, it's going to take time. The repair is going to involve first taking the plank off, which means that probably the person who's doing it is going to have to sand the paint off the plank, identify where all the fasteners are, remove any bungs over the fasteners, back the fasteners out, and pull the plank off the hull. They'll then have to repair the fastener holes in the frames and then they can cut out a new plank and fit it to the hull. All this takes time. Typically for me to replace a plank on my boat or I'm very familiar with the construction of the boat is going to run oh, a 15 foot plank would take me 
probably the better part of a day or about eight hours. At $75 an hour, that's $600 in labor plus the materials. In addition, you're probably going to find something else that's wrong because if you have a plank that's rotting, fresh water must be getting to it somehow. Either your coatings have failed, your paint has failed and it's letting water get into the boat from rain. You've got a leak in the deck that's letting water get into the inside and rotting the plank out. So you really need to track down the reason that the plank was rotted. You might and fix that. You might also have some rot in the frames. Well, that means you're either going to have to sister the, the frame that's rotted or perhaps remove it and scarf in a new piece of wood. A simple plank replacement can easily cost a couple thousand dollars. By the time you track down the reason the plank needed to be, to be replaced, and do any additional repairs that might be required. And every time you work on a wooden boat, and I'm not, doesn't matter who's doing the work, boat yard or you personally, whenever you attack an individual problem, you will always find that the problem is bigger than you thought. So what's it cost to own a wooden boat? Well, my boat in a typical year gets about 200 man hours of maintenance. That is, a large part of that is sanding the hull out, repainting it, repainting the trim, repainting the bottom, uh, sanding out and varnishing the cabin house, and possibly doing any upgrades that I might want to do. In addition, since as I said I had some deck leak issues, I generally find myself replacing one or two planks a year, which adds up. And last year, for example, I laminated five new frames and, replank, and replaced seven planks. So that was a pretty big project. Last year, I probably put 300 hours in. Well, 300 hours at boatyard rates would run $22,500 at least, maybe more, depending on where you are. Uh, if you only did 200 hours, that's $15,000 plus any materials you use. If you're paying to have it done, I would say that you have to count on with a typical wooden boat that needs some maintenance, you're probably going to have to count on anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars a year. If you're doing it yourself, you're going to have to have a couple of hundred hours available to do the work. So it's time consuming if you do the work yourself and expensive if you don't. For example, since I've owned my boat for 10 years, I estimate that I have about 4,000 hours of labor in this boat. Well, 4,000 hours, $75 an hour, $300,000. And I also have maybe $20,000 in materials. So, I'm looking, if I had paid to have it done, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $325,000 to have all the work that I've done on the boat myself done by somebody else. Well, that's a lot more than I paid for the boat and would certainly uh, be a factor in ownership. I personally couldn't afford to have spent that much money on my boat. So if you own a wooden boat, Realistically, unless you've got oodles of money, you better be prepared to do some work on it. And you better learn how to use basic hand tools. So that's what it comes down to. Either you pay a lot of money or you develop the skills to do the work yourself. Now, part of the reason I bought this boat was that I wanted to work on the boat. I wanted to develop the skills, something I'd always wanted to do, and that was one of the main drivers for buying the boat. So I didn't mind, and I don't mind, doing the work and putting in the time. There's a great deal of pleasure every year in taking the boat in, into the shed, looking a little bit rough at the end of the season, 
and having it come out of the shed in the spring after I've finished everything, having it look great. So that's what you're what you're looking at in terms of owning a wooden boat. Anyway, I hope that if you feel like you'd like to own a wooden boat, that you just go ahead and do it. 